Hello and welcome to the Guna Talk. Back again with you guys for another show. Good morning. I hope you are well. I hope you're doing good as you join us for the final Arsenal news show of the year. Uh, because tomorrow starts the Arsenal transfer news show. We always start them a month ahead of the transfer window. And of course, tomorrow is December the 1st. And so we'll be starting off the next series of 8am shows. Don't worry, you tune in at the same time. And to be honest, it's just one extra word going in the title. That's the only thing that really changes. Let's be, let's be real. That's the only thing that's changing. But uh, it is going to be the start of... Well, I say the start. I think we're going to carry on from like episode 150-something. I don't know. I don't know where we left it when we ended the, the last transfer window. We were doing this show for a long, long time. Now. In fact, by the time it gets around to the summer of next season, or before that, even June, I think, we would have been doing a daily show for a year. And I think I've only missed about, what, just less than, I think single digits is must be the amount of shows I've missed uh, for days. So it's been an incredible kind of year uh, and a bit, or just under a year, of course, that we've been doing this show for. But uh, it's been great fun. And I love the fact that we've built this community every morning. Everyone says hello to each other, as you can see in the chat box. Good morning to everybody joining us. Colin, Mike, Social, Matt, uh, Javier. We've got uh, Kaiser, Social, Ian. Uh, we've got Adam, Jose. We've got Juno. We've got uh, Marcus. This morning, Tom. Hope you are all, though. These Renato Sanchez rumours cannot be good for your health. Look, it is what it is. I haven't even reported on it today. So uh, we're just going to leave the Renato Sanchez to the side because it's just, it's just regurgitated stuff, basically, at this point. We know there's interest from Arsenal. But let's just wait and see. We know that anything happens with it. Andreas, good morning. DJ, yeah. And we've got Terry. We've got Mr. Ginger Guna, Jose, Chris. Uh, we've got Trevor and Daniel Robert as well in the chat box. Well, there's more of you as well. I can't read through all your names. I'm sorry. Good morning to all of you in the chat box. Hope you're doing well. I hope you're enjoying life. Uh, and if you're not, do something about it. So let's uh, let's move forward to obviously tell you about the Arsenal way. We are, I mean, let me just have a quick live check upon the sub count. Oh, wow, we've hit 5K. I was about to say, please help us hit 5K. We've hit 5K. Thank you so much to everybody that's helped us hit 5,000 subscribers. We managed to get there within three months, which is, is mad. I mean, I started at the company uh, end of September, start of October time. And no, I think it was even in August, was it not? I think... September, August 10th or 11th was my first day. So just over three months. Um, and it took about a month until we started the channel. And now we're at three, uh, 5,000 subscribers, which is is insane, to be honest. It's, uh, it's absolutely mental. So thank you so much for all the support. Thank you to all of you that are supporting the channel. And uh, there will be another morning show. If you enjoy these morning shows, we do one at 9.30 every day over there. There'll be uh, the press conferences you can watch. And we'll be analysing today the Arsenal-Newcastle game and seeing the intricacies of that match. I'll be joined by Josh Williams, a very smug Liverpool fan, Josh Williams, <laughs> after the Liverpool win last week. But he's a good lad and he knows the stuff about football, so it's going to be good to talk to him about the game. Let's crack on, though, with the first story of the day. And we start by talking about Raf Ranić. Uh, now, Arsenal, of course, are expected to play against Manchester United on Thursday, barring any weather conditions that may have any ideas of, of stopping the game. Now, they are continuing to have a few issues with his work permit problem, and that has caused there to be a few concerns about whether or not Ralph Ranjit will actually be um, in... <laughs> oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Still advertising six minutes into the video. It's called an intro, kill. It's called an intro. So, look, you've just made me extend that intro even further. So, there you go. Subscribe to the Arsenal Way if you haven't done so already, kill. Appreciate your support, sir. Uh, but Ralph Ranić uh, may or may not be in the dugout. It still looks unclear. I will be very surprised at this point. I mean, it's Tuesday now. If they don't sort out the work permit issues by at least today, I'd be shocked to see him in the dugout for the Manchester United Arsenal game on Thursday. Will it make a difference? I do think so. Uh, I do absolutely think that it will make a difference if he's there. I think he'll be a big, uh, be a much bigger guider of kind of sort of things of where they're at right now. But uh, it is what it is in regards to Ralph Ranić. I don't think he's going to be able to have a huge impact, but surely some impact moving forwards. That's for sure. Let's move on to the next story. Apologies, my cold. I feel like it's absolutely coming back. I could already feel it. It's it's working its way through my sinuses right now. It's awful. Um, so apologies for any sniffling uh, that goes on during this. My throat seems to have recovered. The nose is still certainly not. 
We carry on with Demazio talking about Karim Adeyemi, the Salzburg forward that's being linked with a number of clubs, including the likes of Borussia Dortmund and Barcelona. But Demazio has said that he feels that I think he would be a better fit for Arsenal than Barcelona. The style of play in Barcelona is different from that in Arsenal. I remember the days when we used to be compared directly to them. Now we're being compared completely differently. And if I had to imagine him in one of those clubs, I would say Arsenal because that fits better into his style of play. I would love Adeyemi. Um, I think he's a great, great footballer, great talent. I feel like he's one of those strikers, though, with his age that you would need to kind of, you know, I think he would need to be brought in with someone else in their mid-20s because he's only still very, very young. And so because of that, I think it's certainly a situation that we may find ourselves, um, we may find ourselves wanting more experience in the striking department than signing a, a 20 under player. But, you know, we'll wait and see. Uh, but it's certainly one that we need to consider. Um, it's certainly one that if there is interest from Arsenal, that if we can get him, we should be looking to go out and get him as much as feasibly possible. Let's move on to our next story, which revolves around Alexandre Lacazette. The French midfielder, midfielder, striker, what all about French midfielder? French striker, of course, at Arsenal, has been linked with a move away from the club for some time now. I know I've been talking about this cold for weeks. That's how ill I've been for just weeks now. It's ridiculous. Um, Lacazette could leave the club very, very soon. I'd be surprised to see him leave in January. I feel like it will happen in the summer. But outlet Fijales, uh, Fijales, Fijales, Fijares. I don't know how to pronounce it specifically. Um, but you've probably heard of the outlet for Shahez. I question their reliability. Um, but they have reported that supposedly a verbal agreement between Lacazette and Barcelona has been made. A v- it makes a bit of sense. I understand that it makes sense to see Barcelona going after a striker, but I, I'm just I'm not sure why that would suit Laka, who wants more game time. He's not going to be playing over Memphis to Pie. I would. I would thought that he might be going off to someone like Atletico Madrid and playing alongside in more of a, a system where he can get more minutes and replacing Luis Suarez. If he ends up at Barcelona, look, I wish him the absolute best, of course, although I'm not the biggest. Um, I'm, not the, I'm absolutely the biggest fan of, of, of Barcelona whatsoever, being an Espanol follower in Spain. But if there is a verbal agreement between Laca and Barca, you know, it is what it is. Uh, we will see him leave. We will move on to whoever comes in after him. But that is a player um, that has, has obviously had a, a decent spell at Arsenal, but not one that we will write home about as he's he never broke into that legendary status. But no, he's contributed and he was part of the FA Cup winning side in 2020. And uh, fingers crossed he can help Arsenal towards some silverware before the end of this season. That would be very much beneficial for the club. Uh, Pablo Murray, Chris Wheatley, uh, my colleague at Football.London, who has reported that Flamengo, his former side, are looking at a possible move for Murray in the coming months. Murray, of course, has not been playing much football whatsoever for Arsenal since the arrival of Gabriel and his maintained fitness without European football as well. There hasn't been too many opportunities for Pablo Murray to play. He was pretty poor in the game at home against Chelsea, and that was the last game he actually played, I think, for Arsenal. It was that long ago. He hasn't played since August. He was suffering with illness, which kept him out of some of the games like against Leeds in the League Cup. But Flamengo supposedly are tracking the situation and could look to move for Pablo Marie once again. If we do sell him, we will need to bring someone in. He's the only other backup left-footed centre-back that we have. Arteta does like to have a centre-back with a left foot to replace Gabriel should he move on. Tactically, that's what he likes and prefers. So it is possible that Pablo Marie could end up at uh, Flamengo before uh, the end of the season. So there you go. Um, let, oh, wow. Terry, Daniel Robert calling out Terry. Who who are Atletico? Come on, Terry. Come on, educate. Atletico. I, oh, the pe- the long time listeners of the channel will know that is a pet peeve of mine. Atletico, son. Come on. Let's get this right. Uh, let's move on to the last um, story, uh, which is more of a I was going to say personal story, but it's, per- it's absolutely not a personal story. Uh, Iannis Stoika, uh, we will be covering him in our first tactical breakdown of the 2020, 2021-22 uh, season uh, of the January window. 
He is obviously a striker that we've been linked to over the last couple of, I say days, but it's kind of crossed over into over a week now. And the owner, uh, Gigi Bacali, of uh, Stal, um, football club Stal Bucharest have turned around and said that Arsenal tabled a 7.5 million euro offer. And so therefore, we must do our due diligence and uh, and look into Ianis Stoika. And so a little bit later on today, uh, we will, of course, be looking into the Romanian striker. He's a player that we know uh, seemingly is very much on Arsenal's radar, that they are very interested in signing. And uh, I don't know a single thing about him, besides the fact that he's an 18-year-old striker that's played in the Romanian under-21s and he's been compared to the likes of Kylian Mbappe. So, I mean, that tells us all that we need to know, doesn't it? He's clearly a world-beater. <laughs> this is all you can say about that one. But... We will learn a fair bit more about him this afternoon at, uh, I'm not 100% sure of when we're going to do the show. It might be pre-recorded because I've got another show today as well, which is our uh, preview show of the Manchester United game, which will be able to join us at 5.30pm UK time, where we'll be joined by a few of the members to talk about Manchester United. So without further ado, though, let's wrap up the news and get to your questions. If you do have a question that you'd like to throw into the chat box, then please do and we will go through as many of those as feasibly possible. Let's do it. This cold, I'm sorry, but it's not okay. I, I know I've been moaning about it for weeks, and you must be sick, ironically, of me moaning about it. But it, I just, I don't get it. I, and but before you ask, yes, I've done tests. They've come back negative. I, it's just. It's just the British weather is what it is. Must what it must be that. It must be that. I'm just sick of it. I'm just sick of it in all of the ironic ways that you can be. Let's uh <laughs> Dan, I'm gonna I'm gonna ban you for five minutes if you carry on, son. Um in the chat box, let's see those questions, guys, and uh, we'll try and go through as many of those as feasibly possible. Let's scroll up a little bit a little bit to IGK. Hi, Tom. Erdegaard has to play from now on. For me, he's the only player whose technically technical ability I trust in the midfield. And with him, keeping the ball and creating is much more potent. I agree with you. I would start him against Man United. But I know that Erdegaard has absolutely divided people. And I think there are a lot of people that are very, very much not on the side of seeing uh, Erdegaard in the starting lineup. And on yesterday's Arsenal Lounge, in which... I'll tell you what, I, I do enjoy going on the Arsenal Lounge because I've said this before. There are a lot of people that aren't watchers of this channel, mainly through the fact that they're banned. So they jump into the chat box on the Arsenal Lounge and just gun for me. And I just, there's, there's, there's probably a, a really devilish side of me that kind of enjoys it because it's quite funny seeing how much you live rent free in these kids' heads, especially when you don't. You can kind of pick apart their arguments with facts. And then the classic line of, have you ever done that argument where you're debating with someone and uh, say you use some statistics to support your argument and in response they turn around and go, oh, but it's the eye test, like the eye test. <laughs> Whenever anyone says to you the eye test, what it means is, is I'm not interested in facts. I only care about my opinion. That's, <laughs> that's what the eye test is. It's just code word for I've got no evidence to support my argument. Just believe me. It's, yeah, you know. <laughs> I went to the Book of Mormon in the theatre the other week, and there's a lot of parallels between those two things, if you know what I mean. Darren says, Tom, thoughts on Marcelo Flores, Dan Ballard and Carl Hine all getting senior international call-ups before getting opportunities at Arsenal. Senior international call-ups. Has Marcelo Flores been called? Have I missed this? Since when did Marcelo Flores get called up for the... Um, I don't see anything about him getting called up uh, for the senior side. National team set to negotiate with Arsenal to have player outside of international break. Um, blah, 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 blah. The 18-year-old can also play for Canada and England. Now, according to TUDN, even though Flores is still to make his professional debut for Arsenal, he could already be called up to Mexico's main squad. The story says the teenager should be in the list of the friendly match against Chile, uh, which will be played on the 8th of December in the United States. However... Since the game will not be taking place during the international break, Mexico are now set to negotiate his trip with Arsenal. Wow, that is... Let him go. 
Absolutely let him go. That's great experience. That's incredible. Fair play to Marcelo Flores. I know that they are, I know that the Mexico side are very, very intent on trying to keep him because obviously he's got the ability to play for both Canada and England and Mexico really want to keep hold of him because he's doing really well for their, their youth team. That's that's some great news. Darren, thank you for bringing that to my attention, mate. That's certainly something that I had not spotted. So uh, fair play. That's why we have you guys in the community helping me out all the time. Uh, the Robots Will Eat You says, uh, do you think we'll sell Pepe in January or the summer? We Do we need a replacement for him? I think that, I don't think he'll go in January. I think there is a like, I think there is a, you know, an element of likelihood he could leave in the summer and then we would need to replace him. Um, I just don't know who's going to bid for him. I don't know who's going to come in with the money that Arsenal would want. I think Arsenal would want upwards of 30, maybe even near 40 million pounds to sell Pepe. So I don't know who is going to pay that. Um, and if that's the case, it's going to be really difficult to try and sell him. Uh, Marcus says, Tom, so aside from your mate Renato, who will we go for in January? We need a midfielder. And with Noah Bamiang, we need a striker. But will we buy slash loan in January? I would be shocked if we signed a striker in January. I would, I, it would really surprise me if we did. I just don't feel like the options that Arsenal are looking for are going to be necessarily there to buy besides maybe Vlaovic, and even then he doesn't look too keen on joining Arsenal. I think that the likelihood is that we will sign a midfielder on loan. I think that's probably what will happen. Um, the only way I can see us signing a striker is if Lacazette leaves in January, which I don't think he will. I think he will wait until his contract is up in the summer. And I think the likelihood is that we'll probably bring someone in on loan in January for the midfield, which is fine because you can't always sign the best players in January. But... I mean, as Dan Potts pointed out on the podcast the other day, if you're, at like, if you're acting like a big club, you should be able to go out and get who you want, when you want. You look at Man United getting Bruno Fernandes in January. We ourselves got a Bamiang in January and Mkhitaryan. So there's an argument to say that we should be able to go out and get who we want in the window. I think there's a few more factors that, that affect things than just that. But uh, that's just me. Uh, Vichelle says, even with his attacking prowess, do you think Martinelli will do well against United? Should we play him? Uh, Aaron and Bissaka, Maguire may just about body him. Look, if Saka's not fit, Martinelli comes in for me without a shadow of a doubt. Yes, he lacks the physical presence. Yes, he may struggle in that sense. Yes, he's only played a few minutes of senior football this season, coming off the bench mainly. But he earns that right after his display against Newcastle coming from the bench. But Saka, if Saka isn't fit, and I wouldn't risk Saka in a game that we don't absolutely have to win, I'd love to win it, but I'd take a draw from Old Trafford without a shadow of a doubt. And I would save Saka for these games coming up in the festive period against Everton, against Southampton, against West Ham. Uh, these are the games that we need to be targeting to absolutely win. If We we just need to avoid losing, in my view, against Old, uh, Old Trafford to get a good result. So I wouldn't risk Saka for this game, but we will see. Uh, Tony <clears throat> says, isn't it strange that this fan base can't just simply support their team, but rather debate about everything, even if the team has been on form lately? Where is the negativity coming from? I actually wrote about this, Tony, in a piece yesterday uh, that's probably come up. It's you may People may have seen my original art, uh, uh, Erdogan article, but I wrote a second one yesterday kind of following up on some of the reaction and trying to make sense of some of the chaos. So I'll just throw it into the chat box for you. Um, for me, there are far, far, far too many fans out there that care more about their own point of view and being proven right than their own team succeeding, which is a really, really sad state of affairs. Um, it's not very Arsenal fan-like. It's not what you want to see. But it, unfortunately, it's the reality of the situation. And, I mean, just don't just don't integrate with them. Just don't watch them. Just don't, don't have to worry about them, really. <laughs> just I wouldn't get involved with them, to be honest. Um, Trevor says, Tom, the player value of the squad must have increased since the six signings. Yeah, absolutely, mate. I can't. I can't disagree with that. It's a solid point. Uh, they must. I mean, Ramsdale. How much is Ramsdale worth? How much is Tommy Asu worth? How much is Ben White? Worth? I mean, Ben White's fifty million pound value. He's probably not gone up loads. We paid a lot for him. Tavares. How much is he worth now after we bought him for around eight million quid? They must have gone up loads. So yeah, absolutely, we've been able to raise the value of those players. Um, the Rebels will let you how do I join the Discord server. If you become one of our uh, channel members, link to that is in the description or just click the join button uh, and become an expert member or a TGT ambassador. You can join uh, the Discord server. Uh, Troy says, next summer is going to be the most important summer for Arsenal in recent years, but if we really want to push for top four, 
Uh, we have to sign a central midfielder and a capable striker to increase our chances. I don't disagree that they would certainly help. I wouldn't say that we have to sign a striker, but I think centre midfield is definitely an area that we would have to um, look to if we want to kind of, you know, continue this run. Uh, Manu says, first of all, good morning. Uh, my question, if you had a choice between either Camera from Marseille or Cantwell coming in, who would you take? Uh, Camera. I think the central midfield position is a lot more pressing and he can double as a centre-back as well at times. So I think that's also a positive. Uh, yes, click the join button or there's a link in the video description, mate. That's the only way you can access it. Um, Tony says, Tavares is an absolute steal. I love everything about him. Josh says, do you think Tommy Asu was a good move? Are you kidding? Absolutely. It was obviously a good move. Reese Sterling and Isaac need to come in. That would, I mean, that's not a question, Reese, but <laughs> I appreciate the, the comment. Um, let's go to let's scroll up a little bit more. See who I missed. Benji, do you think Xhaka's return would take us up a level in the bigger games due to his experience and leadership? Yes, I think it will help. Um, someone asked me yesterday on the Arsenal Lounge, do I think he will come straight back into the team in January? Yes, only because Partey is going to be going off to the African Cup of Nations. Otherwise, Lokonga doesn't lose his place, even with Xhaka fit right now. He doesn't lose his place anyway. We've been going for 20 minutes, we're going to wrap things up there because we've got two more shows for you today. And if you're not bored of my voice, which, you know, fair play to you if you are, I'll be live in just over an hour's time on the Arsenal way. So make sure you come and check us out. But I'll have a preview show for the United game out a little bit later on today and also a tactical breakdown on Ianis Stoika. So make sure you tune in for that. Have a fantastic day. Drop a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, up the Arsenal. <laughs>